Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everyone. Hope you all are safe and having a great time with your family. And welcome to PowerShell 24-hour conference. Uh, the first ever 24-hour uh, conference, uh, which I have seen of course in PowerShell world for sure. And thanks a lot for the organizers for organizing this uh, conference because we have missed PowerShell Summit this year, PST UK and uh, of course PS Confessia, which was supposed to happen next month. So this is a great relief uh, on all of that, actually. Thanks, and once again, thanks for the panel who selected uh, my session, which is about uh, debugging the scripts from the command line. So I am Prasoon. I'm just another PowerShell fan, and uh, I work as a software technologist for Philips, where I uh, do uh, full-time automation, uh, mostly with PowerShell, and. Uh, a little bit of Ansible as well. So this is my Twitter handle where I often tweet and uh, I am a PowerShell core contributor uh, with the help of uh, great experts over in the GitHub community. I was able to do a couple of con contributions. This is my GitHub ID. And apart from all these, uh, I'm proud to say that I'm a senior moderator at PowerShell.org where uh, we answer uh, uh, threads uh, all day uh, in the forums. We have dedicated forums for Pester, DSC, and any other general PowerShell queries. So with that, I have an agenda here, and agenda is actually just to keep me in a flow. So we'll start by understanding bug uh, debugging and the debugger, and we'll see the command lines uh, which helps uh, in debugging, uh, basically set uh, the stage for debugging and we'll jump into a demo where we'll debug a script locally from the command line then we'll see uh, uh, how to debug scripts running in a job background job because not always scripts are uh, uh, executed interactively right so we'll see how to debug scripts running in a job and finally we'll see how how can we debug script running in a remote session a remote session here is not a remote computer but it's run uh, script running in a uh, remote process it can be a remote PowerShell process which is running under a scheduled task or it can be a uh, PowerShell code executing under any other process like a C-sharp executable or anything else so any uh, uh, PowerShell uh, code running in a different process so that's about remote uh, debugging so starting with bug right so the reason why I wanted to have this section here is you know, we all, uh, or many of us are admins, or many of us have started as an admin or ops guy, and eventually became a developer, or, or in the uh, many are in the uh, in the transition period. So, you know, you know uh, during that course, we uh, we started writing scripts for whatever we need, maybe 10 lines, then 100, then 200, maybe 1,000. Then we understood uh, from the community, or we understood from documentation about functions. Then we created, started creating modules and libraries. So, so eventually, without even us knowing, we are uh, uh, adopting uh, software development principles, right? Not everything, but at least uh, uh, we, we have started. So that's how uh, PowerShell is helping uh, all of us, right? Uh, that's happened for me as well. Uh, now I am a full-time uh, dev, but I was uh, an admin. So during that course, we are just um, uh, using some practices which we are not even aware of uh, that we are using like uh, version control, right? I, I, I'm not sure many, uh, how many of us are using version control at work, but uh, of course, when, when, when we work for a software project, that is a must. So like that, there are a lot of uh, uh, software development principles that we have to follow when we are developing uh, a solution or, or, or we are, when we are in a project. So, uh, bug and debugging all these are just one among the uh, important uh, uh, area in that so uh, I, I will be just focusing on that area like bug and debugging there are a lot of things out there which eventually we'll all learn and which are you know proven for years uh, so yeah so let's start by understanding what is a bug so you know a bug is uh, you know anything in the code which 
uh, gives an unexpected result as i mentioned in the slide uh, this is not uh, uh, anywhere from the wikipedia or whatever this is what i understood so uh, you know we will have a script where we write where, where we expect an output and we will get a different output or we might get an error or you know uh, anything can happen if it is not uh, uh, written properly or if it has some problems in it so that is basically called a bug the reason the reason for that unexpected result is termed as a bug so uh, I'm going backwards or okay yeah so it can be because of uh, a logic error in the code right for example I have a code which adds up two numbers and I have given one and two as an input and I'm expecting three but I'm getting four or five that means there is some problem in the logic so that is because of a logical error and it's not going to give any exception or any error in the output but uh, it is gracefully giving an output but it's completely out of logic so that is called a logical error and it's it is a bug similarly a bug can be because of a syntactical error which should not ideally happen in software development world which uh, where, where, where we follow uh, all the uh, practices like using an IDE which mostly and all the IDEs will show a syntactical error and even if we miss it from the IDE there are a lot more process before the script go to production there are a lot of other process which can catch syntactical error so uh, uh, but still it can happen so there the script will fail and it's going to give an error so that is a bug and it's because of a syntactic error, syntax error in the code and it can be again because of an unexpected environment right because we do development in our dev boxes and we are expecting uh, everything as is uh, and when the code hits the production environment there could be something that we unexpect uh, you know because for example uh, in our dev box we have C drive and uh, D drive in Windows and if, if you are writing this should not ideally happen but if you're writing a script which is cross-platform because PowerShell is cross-platform so there are no drives in Linux right so if you are executing this code in a Linux environment of course if there is a line where it does something like navigating it to C drive it will fail so that that's because of an environmental change it has to be ideally caught in testing automated testing or whatever kind of testing but that is a difference in environment and it can even be in, in within windows itself i'm developing a script in windows and i'm delivering and the production is also in windows and uh, and, and and name change maybe a, a drive name change dropbox have c drive and d drive and in the production it is c drive and e drive so any code which is expecting a d drive in production will fail so that's a problem with the environment right so there it fails but from the uh, uh, user's perspective it's a bug because it's not serving the purpose it is giving an unexpected result or an error otherwise it can be a bug can be even because of a typo you know this happens every time too there are IDs with uh, uh, you know uh, grammar uh, checking but still spell checkers but still typos can happen you know and that also will uh, have an impact in the execution and script is going to fail or scripting is going to have a logical error that is or that, that, that is one another reason to have a bug there can be many reasons for these searches for uh, things I have uh, got in my mind so that's a bug right so we are getting a bug but how do we uh, identify analyze and fix it so that process is actually called debugging it's 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 a process which helps us to remove bug from the code so it's basically a, a process of investigating uh, uh, during the execution during the code execution uh, what went wrong what is the current state so all those things so that's called debugging it's called debugging right that removing the bug debugging it's in the term itself debugging but how right how okay we know bug and now we know debugging but how do we do that who will help us right so that is called a debugger 
it's nothing but a piece of software which helps us in the process of debugging that means most of the time i mean yeah all the uh, uh, languages with I mean, itself comes with the debugger like powershell has a debugger uh, from version 2 onwards so uh, yeah a, a, any programming languages will be having debugging and many of the ids also uh, helps us in uh, debugging in in in, in, a, in a better way but uh, it's all about ui and that's not what this session is about so uh, debugger is a piece of software within the uh, within the uh, tool, and uh, it ha it, it, that helps us in uh, doing the whole uh, investigation. Right. So, why why debugging with a debugger? You have to stress that why debugging with a debugger is important because there are uh, debugging is, is just a process, right? It need not to be always with a debugger. Debugging is a process of identifying the buggy part in the code. So, you know, we all have done it and we are still doing it and we will continue to do it. The print statement, right? Uh, right host, or right output, whatever in PowerShell. We quickly uh, open the code and we'll try to print the variable in between to understand what is a value, right? That is a simple and quick and normally used way of uh, debugging everywhere you know uh, i want to okay i'm suspecting this variable so let me print that variable and i doubt that whether the code is entering to this if condition or not so i will say okay entering this if condition or the entering the condition blah 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 so that those are just by printing statements right but we don't know where the bug is going to be and we might end up printing almost all the lines in the code that is not good and that's not easy it's time consuming right and another thing is uh, it is very difficult to clean up once the debugging is done so oftentimes we end up in having the uh, debug statements in, in in the production code which is uh, ugly and which is again a bug maybe uh, because it's printing something unexpected because there can be another program which is dependent upon the log of our script so that can bring a problem so so debugging with a debugger is very much important because it's it's going to help us a lot. It's going to be easy to find the buggy code because we are not going to uh, edit the code much. We might be editing based on uh, the, the type of debugging which we do even within the, by using the debugger itself, but uh, uh, we won't be writing the print statements anymore with the debugger. So it's going to be easy. And with that itself, it's going to save a lot of time uh, with, with the debugging because uh, we, we are right into the execution and we will be investigating without even uh, you know otherwise we'll have to print the first statement then see okay identified that that is not the area where the bug is again I will add some more print statements so uh, it is going to take a lot of time so with the debugger we are saving all that time and if, and apart from that you know debugging uh, this is not with respect to a bug but debugging uh, is going to help us understanding the code execution flow you know uh, we, uh, we 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 can easily understand if if we are doing or if we are handling a script which is written by someone else if i want to know the uh, execution how the, how the code flow happens debugger is a great choice where i can uh, see how the code is uh, you know executing in which when, when i pass these these inputs where all the code is going so it, it is a great technique to understand or, or study a script as well, right? Okay, now, so now we know, okay, debugger is important. It is going to help us a lot. But still, how how do we, or who, who helps us in uh, <clears throat> posing the script, right? For us to start debugging, the script has to be uh, posed because script can uh, start and uh, end or finish in no time. So how do we... Uh, how do we uh, break the execution before the error happens, right? So we need uh, some uh, some some technique there. That is called breakpoint. So uh, a breakpoint is something that uh, that we set or we tell the debugger that this is the place where you have to break the execution. That means when the code executes and based on what we have set in the environment for debugging, it will pause the execution or it will 
wait for us to start debugging that is the place where the debugging starts and we will have a lot of commands to help us in debugging when the code stops and at, at that point we'll be starting analyzing uh, the entire code and that is called a breakpoint so how right we know breakpoint is required but how do we set it because we don't have a ui here right we don't have a ui here it's all about command line so uh, we have commandlets like i have mentioned in the agenda we have a lot of commandlets and a couple of uh, them are going to help us in uh, uh, setting the breakpoint you can see the first command itself it's all about setting a breakpoint it's it's that's the advantage of PowerShell. Right? it's a pretty declarative set ps ps is for PowerShell. set ps breakpoint that means it's going to help us in setting the breakpoint we have a session and i know where it is failing uh, and there are a lot of conditions so based on that i can tell this PowerShell session that okay this is the where, place where you had to set the breakpoint and based on that, the debugger will break the execution. And the, the, the most important commandlet, okay? And next one, of course, mostly uh, for any set commandlet in PowerShell, there will be a get commandlet. So it's about getting all the breakpoints and, you know, uh, listing, basically. And once we are done, we need to remove the breakpoint because once we have fixed the bug in the same session, if you want to... Uh, continue the execution we have to remove otherwise it's again going to hit the breakpoint and you know it's going to make it difficult so we have to remove the breakpoint it's kind of a cleanup uh, action for the session and you can see another one here which is completely uh, having a different uh, verb it's called wait so wait debugger this is a command like which we use when we when we uh, you know, it, this is kind of a hard-coded breakpoint or a static breakpoint. This is a commandlet where we use it to, uh, you know, uh, break the code execution when we don't know where the problem is. So that we can, we, but for this, we will have to edit the code. We will put this commandlet inside the code. And whenever the execution hits this commandlet, this will break the execution. So it's kind of a hard-coded breakpoint. And you know, uh, the last two are uh, again to manage breakpoints like um, uh, disable and enable the breakpoints. I haven't uh, used it ever. Uh, maybe, yeah, depends on the scenario. We will use it basically to manage breakpoints in a session. So let's, uh, let's see, uh, uh, let me open a PowerShell session. And let's see a uh, uh, little bit about set PS breakpoint. <laughs> so the helpful get help command and set PS breakpoint. So this is a simple help. Uh, we don't want to jump into the full detail help, but you know, help is the first place where we have to look into to understand anything in PowerShell. Okay, and basically for any command line in PowerShell. So, you know, uh, this is uh, the syntax uh, area where you can see this has say, three syntaxes. So when we say three syntaxes, that means this commandlet behaves uh, in three different ways based on the input. So let's see all these three in detail, at least for this commandlet. So set PS breakpoint, the first one, but mostly, I mean, basically these are actually overloads when we say, uh, or when we compare to other languages, we can say those are overloads. Overloads are basically different behaviors of the same function or same method. So treating this uh, as an API or, or a command like here, this has three different behaviors based on the combination of input, input we give. So the first one is, of course, you know, we need to have a script because we are executing a script. And, you know, this is a mandatory input. You can see how to, you know, uh, how to understand a mandatory parameter from the help or from the syntax, right? If, if the uh, parameter including the type is enclosed in a square bracket, that means it's a mandatory parameter. Otherwise, it's an optional one. So here, script is a mandatory parameter. And of course, just by having a script, we can't set uh, a point to break. So we have to bare minimum tell the uh, uh, 
debugger where to break and you know in powershell error messages are a beauty right you know it is going to give all the information that we wanted at least to start with debugging and we all are aware of that uh, powershell error gives the line number where it fails so that is the area we, we have to focus so we will pass the script name the script which is failing and we'll pass the line number where it is failing that's it these are the bare minimum thing which we have to use for, uh, to start line based debugging and, and you know sometimes we'll get the column information as well for example if it's in a for each and or, or or you know if it is a, uh, having a sub expression like you know write uh, write out, output put object this is like this if we do get process this is the one which is going to execute first then uh, the string right so this has some column this is line and this has column so if it is failing in this get process for some reason this can be any code we will have little more straight uh, away approach a straightforward approach directly to that sub expression and have never used it but yeah the column number is going to help but it's optional and the last one is action action is basically it can be used uh, in multiple ways like the default action is break break the execution and it accepts a script log that means we can literally do anything in that for example when it is a breakpoint i want to write it to an event log write it to a log file or anything and it can even be used to have conditional breakpoints which i will be showing of course you will be able to uh, understand it that time so that is uh, the first uh, uh, behavior and second one is uh, uh, based on variable you can see this is the only difference here it has script but here it's optional the reason why is it optional is we are not dependent on a line we are dependent on a variable that means sometimes uh, we will have a guess that okay uh, there is a logic error that means this because we are the other and we know this variable has some problem uh, that's what I suspect. So I can write away, tell the uh, debugger, okay, whenever you you write or read from the variable, break the execution. So this uh, set, but this parameter set or this behavior is used for that. And for that, a script is not uh, uh, to be there because if if we specify a script, then that break uh, or that uh, breaking condition is applied only when that script is executed. Otherwise. The variable break condition is uh, applied in the entire PowerShell session and of course it, it also has the uh, action uh, capability and mod right mod so this is again uh, depend on the variable like when do I need to break when the variable is read or when the variable is set or written or uh, when it is both like read or write so based on uh, our uh, guess we can tell by, by by default it is red or right uh, i think and the third one is again which is something uh, where the script is optional but it's based on a command for example in the error message it's printing uh, 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 the error from a function that means that uh, there is a function which we are using and it is giving some unexpected results so i want to go inside the function so i don't need to uh, know in which line the function is i just I will just tell the debugger, okay, break the execution when the code execution hits this function. When that function is getting called, break it. I will directly step into the function and will start the debugging. For that too, we don't need to specify a script because a function can be executed if it is publicly exposed uh, or dot sourced. Um, if the library is dot so the function is available in the console itself right in the session itself so need not to be there a script need not to be there but if we specify a script that is again straightforward uh, the break uh, happen happens only when the script is executed with that function or that, sorry or the function is executed within that specified script so these are the three uh, uh, behaviors of set ps breakpoint so we will directly jump into a demo and we are done with slides we'll see the demo so for the demo how oh, i have a script here uh, this is actually uh, uh, a powershell module which i have created uh, 
long pack, maybe a four years pack, which I uh, didn't use much, just as a hobby project I did. So uh, this is uh, basically just a script. I wrote it as a module, so it was a function, but now I converted it as a script. This is basically used to uh, uh, read a script nothing but uh, in, in, in a system where uh, we have a Linux machine or a nano server uh, at that of th at that point of time I was exploring nano server so I did this uh, we want to know uh, when we get an error and it is showing line number 133 has an error I want to know what is the line I don't want to open uh, uh, another VM or another uh, or my dev system to open uh, the code in an ID rather I would prefer to uh, do something uh, within that uh, black box you know the Linux uh, environment to uh, see what's in that line number so I have a script here which will help us to highlight highlight the line uh, line number which I specifies apart from that this has an uh, other option to execute for example uh, I want to execute and let me op let me see that let me show you read yes you know so this I'm using a script here which is actually from PowerShell repo this script helps us to install PowerShell uh, from directly downloading from the github releases uh, area and let me just execute it without any uh, other parameters so it is going to simply print the entire code it's not a big one I think it's around 400 lines yeah it's around 500 lines it's just printing everything right so you know I wanted to I know uh, the problem is in line number of four not two so I, I want to see what's there in four not two so it is it's not uh, uh, worthwhile for a big script of course it's going to take time but you know it's a curly bracket here but of course it's highlighting in a different color so we can even give uh, uh, multiple like 300 and 320 so it is going to print up both the lines 300 and 320 and both places are empty spaces here okay so uh, that is uh, one uh, capability of the script and the other one is basically to uh, execute the script itself that means this script I want to execute but why do I need another script to execute the script right not required but the uh, thing here is uh, the script might fail or I know the script is failing and I want to know where the error is because I don't have a UI here so I can tell okay execute the script and the script can take a hash table which is literally the input for the for this script okay so this command of the script can take another script and if the script has uh, inputs to be passed We'll use the arguments which will take a hash table key value pair for the inputs of the script then I have to tell okay execute and show the error as a text table like table format it has two options like text table and uh, just print the line number with the line so let's see uh, for the demo purpose I have made some problems in the script and hopefully it should fail so the script is executing and uh, yeah it has failed it has failed in a line where it tries to do an invoke web request as I told you this is to install PowerShell right uh, uh, by downloading uh, uh, from the github so it has failed at line number 380 right so another one is a row 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 means it will for the same thing it will try to execute and if it fails uh, it is going to tell the line where it failed see uh, now I know the full line where it failed not sure how it's going to help I didn't use it ever so I don't know the drawbacks of this code but that is not the point here so now I know where it failed right line number 380 so let's start debugging for that we don't need okay we'll use the same uh, code so we'll do set ps breakpoint and it has script input I'm passing the script and I'm telling line 38380 so it has set a line breakpoint so we'll execute it again it 
is executing now it has hit the breakpoint so this is uh, how it looks when the uh, engine hits the breakpoint it tells us that okay uh, entering uh, the debug mode hit the line breakpoint on the script at line number 380 which is what we have told we have told the uh, debugger to break so it shows the line where it has uh, post or it has stopped the execution for us to investigate and you can see the prompt has changed it has double prompt or nested prompt because this is a default prompt and this is the child or nested one for us to debug so it, that's a great uh, notation and <clears throat> we will start debugging and so you know the first thing which we will always think about is like when we'll think about when we enter and to a new uh, uh, con a new programming language or you know new uh, shell is help and here also we had to start by uh, uh, using the help uh, command so just use a question mark which is a kind of a universal help uh, command you can see you can use help uh, question mark or h so this is a, a kind of detail help for uh, a command like debugging and it's all operated using single letter uh, keywords s s is for stepping into like uh, i am uh, reaching a function so i want to get into the function and analyze the code so i want to say step into the function and v is like step over like move forward execute the next line so that's what v and o is actually to step out like it's the opposite to step into like i have entered into function so i have moved forward okay now i'm sure that the problem is not in the function but i don't want to execute the remaining code in the debugging uh, session uh, let's execute the code you can come out of the say, function or come out of the place where i have stepped into so entering o will do that it will step out from the uh, from that uh, stepped into area and c is like continue that means okay <clears throat> move forward and hit the next breakpoint if there is otherwise just continue the execution that is c and q is of course quit from the debugging session and q hitting q will completely stop the execution of the code as well but c will not c will just continue and we'll see if there is another breakpoint otherwise it will just finish the script q but otherwise it will just quit from the debugging session and from the script execution as well and the d is something similar to quit but not same like it is going to detach uh, it, it will detach the uh, 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 debugger like you know we have a, a debugging uh, process for a remote execution right like i mentioned uh, script executing in a different process so at that time we can use detach because we initially attach right if we have attached we should have option to detach too so this is the uh, uh, shorthand keyword used for detaching from the uh, attached process and k is you know as mentioned here it is to list the call stack for us to do a deep dive on the uh, variables and all those informations in the stack during the code execution and l uh, which is the most most used uh, command I would say uh, during a debugging session uh, which is to list the line where where the debugger is where the breakpoint is so we will start uh, using L first actually L so L you can see line number 380 this is where you can see an asterisk star here which uh, tells us okay this is where the breakpoint or and the code has halted for us to start debugging and v v is something i told right v is uh, to step over just move forward execute okay it has now reached here like that v again and you know here ender ender is kind of repeat the last action that uh, only if it is step into a step over like if it is s or v so i have hit v and if i hit enter it will give the same effect because I previously I have hit V, I don't need to always hit V. I can keep on pressing Enter and it will move forward. And you know, we didn't analyze, we just continued uh, by showing uh, all these keywords. So it has failed. So we will have to start the debugging again. So with that, we can show Q, right? Q means exit from the debugger. So let's start it all over again to really debug. Okay. 
so l and we know this is the area where it fails so normally what i do is i'll just copy paste the command and execute yes this is where it has the problem uh, not found so mostly this is the new uh, concerns error view so what i suspect is there is a problem with the url because it is saying not found so let's see what is the url here HTTPS, github.com, PowerShell, PowerShell, releases, download, slash v, version is there, power, oh, okay, 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 it looks like a typo here, typo here, so that is a problem in this download URL, right, so now we have got some clue, the problem is in this variable, okay, but we don't know where the variable is set, of course it is set somewhere, about that means that code has already executed so we'll have to do the debugging again but let me queue the debugger but this time it is going to be a different type of debugging like we are not going to depend upon a line we now have the chance to do a variable based debugging before that let us do a get ps breakpoint and clean up because we don't want to hit the line anymore remove ps breakpoint and let's hit the breakpoint based on a variable variable is download url so this uh, is going to hit the breakpoint uh, for the download url part uh, variable so let us start the execution again You know, I didn't give any uh, mod here, right? I didn't give any mod here. Uh, so by default, it'll be read and write. So this is write because for a variable to read, at least it has to be written first. It has to be set first. So it has it a break point for the variable. Uh, actually not a break point, but it has broken the script execution based on the variable breakpoint. And it is at line number 369, let's see. Yes, this is where the variable is getting set. Let's see again, this is, uh, these are static uh, value like a string, download and releases and package name. Looks like it's all good. There is no typo or anything here, but we have two variables here. And when we did the debugging uh, with a line, releases was, release was correct, I think. The package name was having a typo, right? So that means we will have to analyze uh, again based on variable package name, right? Package name. So uh, you can see above uh, with some if else ladder variables are getting set. Actually, package name is getting set. So it's again uh, a debugging for uh, this variable, right? This variable somewhere it is getting set. So what we will do is we will do another variable based debugging. Let's clean up, um, set the breakpoint, but this time package name, and let us use the mod when it is getting written. Okay. Um, execution starts, and this time it has hit the variable because you know uh, we have seen an if else ladder here, right? Multiple, so variable is getting set many places, but we want it to uh, stop where it gets set for the first time. So it is in this else a block because uh, mostly because of some condition, this area didn't execute. And here, here is the place where it is getting set. And let's see. Uh, okay, it's a typo. It's a typo. It's a typo. So this is where it is. Uh, causing the problem this is the place this is a buggy code now so what we'll do we now got the uh, result so what we can do is we can either continue by correcting let's do a v move forward right and we can if we want to really uh, continue by uh, um, doing some fix in the runtime we can set this variable with the proper value and And move forward so it's going to you know let me do a c that means it, it continues the execution and see it should 
it should download it should start see it is doing the web request we don't want that to happen now because uh, it's going to take some time so cutting the debugger because we have hit c it's continuing normal breakpoints we have set uh, that's the reason when i hit Control c it has come out of the execution because you know Control c will break the execution so let's go and correct the code this one package name right powershell where it is Okay, <clears throat> we have character. Now let's execute. I think we will have to wait because it's called because I, I have set another one. Uh, okay, see, this is the reason why we need to use remove PS breakpoint, otherwise, it's going to give trouble by hitting the breakpoint again. So, uh, this time it should start downloading yes for the sake of uh, time saving let me post the uh, execution now here video and uh, start uh, when uh, the download completes uh, because we don't want to waste time uh, in just downloading or waiting for the download to complete yeah it has downloaded just downloaded oops it's supposed to fail at some point yes it has failed it has failed at line number 105 uh, in this expand archive uh, right so you see this is where it has failed Ex uh, expand archive internal so uh, has set this example actually to to the third behavior which is uh, function or command based so here we don't need to look at the command i mean line number but we have got a function or we have got a command here to do the debugging so let's set the breakpoint for the command and this time let me not use the script name set ps breakpoint wherever this command is so execute again and we will have to pause it again because it's going to hit that command only once the download is completed yeah it has uh, um, it has hit the breakpoint this progress mark is not going might be a bug so it has hit the breakpoint uh, sorry not a breakpoint you know but it has hit the point where the code uh, 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 hit the uh, function which we have specified the command. If you see, uh, it is at the start of the function definition. And if we hit V, we have entered the function, which is the first line. And uh, again, V, you can see, yes, it's very uh, straightforward that the function has a path parameter, but here it uses a uh, local path, which is, uh, which is not defined. So it's, it's going to fail. So now we have entered into the function, and as I mentioned, we have something called O that is the power of the function. So it's not uh, uh, going to con in, uh, do the uh, line by line debugging, but we'll just come out of the function. Now, if you see, uh, it is out of this function. Uh, the, see the line number here, you can see it is. Uh, 106 till 106 and here it is 500 something that means it has come out of the function and another thing which uh, i want to show is uh, another i mean options for list command list is by default showing some number of lines i think by default is 15 here it is almost at the end of the code but default is 15 but i can tell l that okay start uh, show me first 10 lines so it will show the first 10 lines of the code Oh, sorry from from line number 10 uh, till uh, 25 that is 15 9, 15 uh, uh, lines but i can tell okay i i don't need 15 or i need uh, 20 lines from line number 10 to show from 10 to 29 that means 20 lines from line number 10 20 lines from line number 10 
so that l is very much useful if we want to know uh, not because not always we will be uh, satisfied with uh, some three four lines above the breakpoint we might need to know what's even about that so this option is going to help in that okay so this has got some problem let's quit the debugger because we are done with all three behaviors and let me show the conditional breakpoint um, we have that uh, we have that uh, highlight part right line highlight uh, highlight line number three you know three right so uh, it's it's for the script so let me tell this uh, debugger that set ps breakpoint script uh, uh, variable based and I'm sure I know that this script has variable called line number but I don't want to simply hit the variable uh, uh, variable breakpoint when it is getting set or read I have a condition only when the line line number equals 25 then break so it's a conditional default action is break but I'm putting a condition and changing the behavior again to break but only based on a condition now let's execute and the code has hit the breakpoint you know first 24 lines are printed and if I print the line number it has hit based on the condition so this is a great advantage if we want to if we really know okay uh, this time is what we I want to break it's again narrowing down uh, uh, saving more time if you know if you are aware or if you have some guesses this is going to help uh, the conditional breakpoints okay so we are done with ZPS breakpoint so next one from the agenda is debugging background jobs for that let me bring up my uh, CentOS system here, CentOS machine. Okay, let me make it full screen. So, looks like the font is very small. Okay, let me, yeah, let me do. I have a script here. Let's open PowerShell. PowerShell preview I have in this. It's not the latest one no problem so let me see I have a script here called remote script let's run that in a background job start job file path remote script it's nothing a uh, small script which is running in a while loop and it will print the process names that's all just just a script which is going to run for a long time that's all so uh, we have got a job here get job the job id is one then it's running for a long time and i want to know that is one of the use case that a job is running for a long time and i want to know why is it taking long time okay so we have a commandlet called debug job and it's going to take a job id i we'll just need to specify the id and you know uh, script is executing and whenever the debugger hits where the script is executing that point is going to break and here you can see in the prompt it has uh, uh, a nested prompt one for uh, uh, the process then job and the debugger so it is inside process then inside job there it's it has opened the debugger so let's uh, see the line number there is no error in the script it is just to show how to enter inside a job execution for debugging so this is a while loop as, as I told you it's uh, looping uh, every second so it has hit uh, at line number four okay so let's get the debugger this is all actually this is about debugging job bug but we'll do one more thing now we didn't set any breakpoint and you know we didn't it's just entering the debugger and break at that point we will do something here we will use the command wait debugger which i have shown in the slide wait debugger yes 
let me save the file and start the job again let me execute it without a job first and you know it has hit the line as I mentioned weight debugger is kind of we didn't set any breakpoint here but weight debugger is a kind of static breakpoint where it hits when uh, the execution hits that command it will break and we can start using all the debugging commands similarly if we are starting a job a file path a remote script a get job and you know it is telling us that the job the latest job job by the three is you can see the state here uh, state is at a breakpoint right uh, the state here you can see it's at a breakpoint so we can do a debug job id3 directly because it's already waiting for us we don't need to do a jump in and break it's already waiting for us then continue the debugging so that's all about debugging job let's keep this vm away now comes to our last session of the uh, section of the uh, uh, session which is debugging a, another process for that let me open windows powershell let's have an interop there is a reason why i am opening debug i mean uh, windows powershell here so let me increase the font um, make it 24 okay okay so again i'm going to use the same script uh, take the path okay so um, this is process with pid 14972 so assume that this process is running in a scheduled task uh, or in any uh, let's say this process is something else like an sysop executable inside that we have code to execute this script so this script is going to execute in a loop printing process randomly let's keep it aside and let's open our uh, powershell core here so the process id is 14972 now we have command named ender ps host process which can take a process name process object process id or a process name this time we'll go with id which is 1497 14972 14972 <coughs> Voila, see, we have entered, you know, beautiful, right? We have entered to a different process from another process, another proper process. <clears throat> but we didn't start debugging. We have just entered, that's all. So, you know, all PowerShell sessions by default is going to have a run space because without run space, <clears throat> PowerShell can't execute, right? There should be a space where uh, the code runs, right? So that's called a run space. So we have commands called run space, get run spaces. So this returns two output. You can see both are uh, 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 output one is a remote host. Remote host in this case is uh, a host, a partial host in a remote process. That means the actual, actual uh, uh, the local process, local run space for this process. And this is the new run space which we have entered to because we have came from a different process to process 14972 and this is the temporary run space which is <coughs> created for us when we entered now the real command to start debugging is debug run space because we are going to read debug from the run space which where we are right so we have to give the id we can give run space id run space name <coughs> Or in space object, we'll give an ID. The moment we tell debug this run space, it is going to break the execution at that point of time. Wherever the code is, it is going to break. It's same like debugging a job. And see the beautiful prompt. It is in our parent process. From there, it has entered into the 
uh, remote process and we have entered into the run space one then we are debugging see beautiful now we can use all the debugging uh, shorthand commands like l s f whatever we will continue the execution it will just move on um, okay that's not what we should be we should have done okay debug again enter it has again hit because the execution is still continuing we did c we didn't quit we did c right so uh, let's uh, now okay now i'm in the uh, in, in the uh, uh, debugger so i want to detach i mentioned detach command right so detach means it's going to come out of that debugging session i have attached now i have detached but i'm still in that process uh, if i want if the execution is still happening it's still happening we can again enter to the same run space debug so it's a long running task we can do this but if something quick we won't be able to do it so at that time comes our hero wait debugger right let's stop the execution let's put wait debugger but for this of course we should have an editor to edit it we will edit the code and we'll again copy uh, paste to the uh, uh, Linux machine or, or, or uh, uh, the nano server or wherever we don't have UI now uh, assume this is an non-interactive scheduled task so we won't be literally having an, an interactive UI here to uh, debug because this is the local uh, execution right uh, what, what we are seeing here so assume this is running in background in a different process and we know the process ID it's the same process so we will enter to the process and we will see the run spaces uh, we have uh, you know always it's going to be run space one the, uh, where we are going to enter for uh, we are uh, uh, enter ps host process it will be run space one this can be different for each executions whatever but here and you can see the availability it is specifically saying that it is in a breakpoint because we have put a uh, breakpoint, the hard coded breakpoint, like uh, way debugger, right? So it has hit a breakpoint. So it's a matter of uh, entering to the uh, uh, debug uh, run space. Oh, uh, so it's not, it is in a breakpoint, uh, maybe because it's an interrupting, and there is a problem as well. Uh, yes. Let's detach, let's exit. The problem which I was telling is, uh, not with respect to uh, Windows, but if we have two PowerShell, now I have used Windows PowerShell, right? It has, it has hit a debugger here. Uh, uh, but the problem is actually, now here this time we know the problem, because we really should start uh, by entering to the process, wait for the debug, debugging run space then we should start the execution here you can see when we start the execution here it will automatically hit the breakpoint so we had to wait for that okay detach from here then it comes back and uh, wait for the uh, debugging from the interactive session okay the reason why I have used Windows PowerShell here is I've seen a problem that if you are attaching to a uh, PowerShell core process, then uh, uh, it is not going to directly hit the breakpoint without a wait debug command. That is, I don't know whether it is a bug or I'm not aware of some recent changes, but so far, according to me, it's a bug that uh, it's not uh, hitting any breakpoints. And we are right on time. And since this is a recorder session, I, I uh, I, I was expecting questions on the fly uh, because we have chat window uh, opened uh, from the very beginning of the session. And thank you, thank you all uh, for uh, participating in this uh, in in this conference. And thanks again for the organizers. And I just want to uh, uh, show uh, uh, a great reference to. Uh, debugging which is uh, debugging uh, in-depth takeaway debugging session by Kirk Munro 
helped us helped me a lot i highly recommend it thank you thank you all